What's up, sports fans? I'm Casey Valletta. I'm Matt Angio. And this is Real Sports. This episode, we'll talk about the latest state of our, the RB basketball teams. We'll also do a complete update of every RB winner team's sports record. And we'll talk about your favorite Chicago professional teams. So, Matt, what's the update on the latest uh, standings? Yeah, Casey, we got the boys basketball varsity at 8 and 11, led by Clanton and Brooks. We got the sophomores at 15 and 1, the freshman boys at 14 and 2, girls basketball varsity at 18 and 8, led by Samantha Bloom and Lindsay Hoyd. We got the sophomore girls at 15 and 5, the freshmen at 5 and 10. And then we're going to go into boys wrestling, which is the varsity 9 and 3, led by Joey Swallow, Chris Colvin, Joshua Contreras. So, uh, Matt, now we're going to give a little bit of the latest update on the RB Varsity basketball team. Mm -hmm. They sit at 8 and 11. And uh, so, Matt, we've done a few broadcasts so far, and we've seen that they've relied on primarily the three-point shot taken by Jalen Clanton and uh, fast breaks. So, Matt, how do you think they can string together some wins heading into the playoffs? Yeah, Casey, I mean, we, we have both witnessed – this team su successfully shoot the three-pointer at certain times and throughout the season. But it is something that the team can definitely not rely on as of this point forward. I mean, if they were to rely on it, they would have to be shooting eight out of ten times and making it to prove that they are the high-caliber team that they, pr that they want to be. And uh, I feel for the team to further on achieve wins throughout the season, they have to start getting the ball on the boards. they got to start grabbing those rebounds and run the fast break properly. And when I mean properly, I mean that they have to have the big men go down in the center so that they can get the ball right in the middle just in case there's a double team. And then you have the two wingmen go straight for the, straight for the basket. But um, on the bright side for the Bulldogs, their defense is very good. And um, they play very good defense. So Matt, who would you say is a player that needs to step up on this team to uh, increase an 8-11 record? I would say Jalen Clanton and Jalen Brooks. Like we said before, Jalen Brooks had a high of maybe five rebounds one game. And that's something that you can't have from a big man. You gotta have more rebounds coming from that guy, at least 10 rebounds a game. And Jalen Clanton, you know, he wants to be the guy that takes all those shots, which is okay to see. He's a very good player. But um, I think he needs to start passing the ball a little bit more and dishing it out to his teammates. Yeah, Matt, I'd say um, an X factor on the team that I think needs to step up would be uh, Zach Vaya. He's mm -hmm. a sophomore called up midseason. And, uh, He's a key free throw shooter. He's uh, shooting 85 yeah. plus percent. And uh, mm -hmm. I think that is also a player you can't look over. He's in the starting lineup as a sophomore. Well, also, yeah, he is a sophomore. You know, you can't put too much pressure on a player that's a sophomore, right? Uh, you know, rising up in the ranks as a Bulldog basketball player. But, um, you know, it's awesome enough that he's even a sophomore playing for the varsity team. So he's a very good player. Yeah, and, and uh, I mean, 8 11, that. It hasn't been the record you've seen in previous Bulldog seasons. You know, they are a smaller team. But um, what do you think the Bulldogs are going to shape up to be next season? Because they have a 15-1 and sophomore team and a 14-2 and freshman team. Well, you just said it right there, a 15-1 and sophomore team. I mean, you already know what's going to be coming in for this future varsity team from the Bulldogs. I mean, they got, of course, they're going to keep Zach Vaya at the sophomore level. He's going to be a junior next year, of course. Uh, they got players like Reggie, Reggie Lowry. Um, Charles Terry, you know, some big players. Yeah, that, yeah. and uh, Nate Lucas, 6'7", a a big few, kid uh, for a sophomore. You know, Patrick Hanley, there's been a long line of varsity Hanley players. Yes. And uh, Ryan Cermak, he's a yeah. guard to watch out for. Yeah, he's, uh, he's one to look for. Well, uh, we're going to take a short break, and when we come back, we're going to discuss the latest RB basketball game that was against Chicago Christian. So we'll see you when you come back. Welcome back to Rio Sports. I'm Casey Vleta. I'm Matt Angel. And uh, currently we're going to talk about the RB Boys bas basketball team's latest game, and that was against the Chicago Christian Knights, a non-conference game here at home. And they fell short. They were 85-74. to 74. They took an L there. And, uh, Matt, you were, we were announcing the game. What did yeah. you see? Well, I remember going, closing, when it was closing into the game, they were down about five points. And we were talking about, you know, if they go past eight points, then they're going to coast from there on. And that's pretty much what happened. Chicago Christian got lucky on that fourth, fourth quarter run. And, um, you know, Malik Parker, one of the main players for Chicago Christian, had 32 points, nine rebounds, and six assists. 
So he played a very key factor in that game. Yeah, you're going to see a lot in these highlights. Malik Parker, man, he is not tall. He is six feet. He actually slammed down a dunk against the Bulldogs. Yeah. That was something big. But the Bulldogs, man, they were down as much as 18 points in the third quarter. They cut that deficit to five, to, to as low as four in the fourth quarter into the final minutes before Malik Parker really uh, took uh, leadership of the team as he's done all game, and he just went off. Yeah, and also the X Factor, Jalen Clanton for the Bulldogs, 29 points, seven assists and five rebounds. He also played a very key factor in trying to get that win, although they fell short. Yeah, Jalen, that was right after a 30-point performance uh, that previous Tuesday against Glenbard South. It was a great performance by Jalen, as well as junior uh, uh, ace Ryan Sassinas. He is a great three-point shot from behind the arc, and uh, you really saw that. But, Matt, what are some of the negatives that you saw from the Bulldogs that game that contributed to the loss? Well, the Bulldogs were definitely out-rebounded. They committed way too many turnovers, and they failed to take advantage of night turnovers because they both had a lot of turnovers. And uh, that's something that you have to take advantage of. Like I said earlier, you run the fast break as, as much as possible and do it the right way. If you run it properly, you're going to score every single time, and then you get fast break points. Yeah, something uh, Jalen Brooks, the tallest man on the Bulldogs, he's 6'4", 6'3", around there. He had three rebounds all game, and you got to have more rebounds if you're the uh, tallest man on the team. And all three of those rebounds were in the first quarter, something mm -hmm. else to point out. But, you know, the team... They, they never were out of the game. They were down as much as 18, I said earlier, but they were coming back. But you see you know, a lot of just missed shots and um, a lot of fast break opportunities where they wouldn't pass the ball. They, they mm -hmm. were playing uh, un, not, un, not friendly basketball. They weren't going for the one extra pass. Yeah. It's, um, but uh, Bulldogs 8-11, and, 11, and uh, they do need to put together some wins in order to finish a strong before taking on a higher seed playoff opponent. Yeah, but that was the, the latest game against RB Basketball. There'll be more. You'll see more of them. And uh, we're going to take a short break. Teams, and we're talking about the Bears, the Hawks, the Sox, and, of course, the Chicago Cubs. So, when you return. Welcome back to Real Sports. I'm Casey Valletta. I'm Matt Angel. And now is the time to talk about the Chicago professional sports teams. And we're going to talk about the biggest story. If you were a Chicago sports fan, you know that the Chicago Cubs won the World Series. And uh, it's going to be tough for me and Matt to talk about this. We are yeah. Sox fans. But Matt, what did you see out there? Uh, we had a season record of 103 to 58. Pretty amazing for the Cubs, I, w I must say. Um, yeah, they dominated the regular season. They uh, took first place, and I don't think they ever were in second place the entire year. Yeah, and they went through beating uh, San Francisco, uh, the L.A. Dodgers, and then the Cleveland Indians. Uh, it's 108 years since the fir f first championship, yeah. And it was led by Bryant, Rizzo, Lester, Arietta, and Chapman. Yeah, I mean, uh, they, they did a lot of key acquisitions. They, signed, they uh, traded for Roldis Chapman in July before the trade deadline and uh, their pitching really got them through but it was really uh, Chris Bryan and Rizzo, yeah. the uh, Brizzo. Brizzo, yeah. But uh, you know you saw in the World Series Kyle Schwarber came back and that really boosted the team's mentality. Yeah definitely and then uh, we got the Sox fourth in their division uh, 78 and 84 on the season 16.5 uh, GB first <laughs> makes them first. Yeah, I mean they're they're yeah. sixteen and a half games behind first place. But yeah. Matt, let's not talk about the season because there's not, you know, we, we yeah. had a great first half. Second half was not too great. But let's talk about what we saw over the off season, Matt. The yeah. rebuild. The rebuild. Uh, trading Chris Sale, honestly one of my favorite pitchers ever. Uh, we got Adam Eden uh, for Mancada. Yeah, yeah, yeah Yon Mancada, the number yeah. one hitting prospect and they also traded for the number one pitching prospect and these were in back-to-back -back days which had never happened ever in MLB history yeah so if you're a Sox fan you got a lot of stuff looking forward in the future they also got in the Chris Sale trade uh, Michael Kopech throws a uh, hundred five miles an hour yeah I mean that's some of the highest speeds you'll ever see in the MLB especially so yeah but in the 2018-2019 years it'll be a good time to be a Sox fan but, you know, you got a franchise to talk about. That's the Blackhawks. They've won a lot of Stanley Cubs back then and uh, in the past five years. And they're, they sit right now, they're in third in the Central Division. They have a 47-29, or a 26-9 and nine record. And they're led by the same guys, Patrick Kane, Jonathan Taze, uh, all leading the Hawks in scoring. 
And they were just actually in the past All-Star game. So it was nice to see them play in the All-Star game as usual. And uh, Crawford, Corey Crawford has an injury and it has put back the Hawks, but uh, you always got to look at Scott Darling and their backup goalie, you know, that's, he's they, a really good goalie. they got good backups, but having Corey Crawford hurt, uh, definitely seen the Hawks drop four or five games in a row. And speaking of teams losing four or five games in a row, we, we've got to talk about the Bulls, who so they've either been really good or really, really not good. Yeah, I mean, it was something big to hear this summer. I remember listening on the radio. Uh, yeah, Bulls just got Rajon Rondo, and then they got Dwayne Wade. And it's like, as soon as they said Dwayne Wade, I got really, really happy. And I started to think, you know, how's the chemistry going to be between these guys? You know, Rajon Rondo is kind of a hothead, doesn't listen to his coaches. You know, he wants to take the leadership into the team and uh, part of it is because Jimmy Butler has mostly leadership and he is he has all the pressure on him yeah. and um, they yeah. did trade away Derek Rose Joakim Noah two guys who you've seen in Chicago uh, a lot you thought they'd be able to do what Jordan did bring a championship but uh, you know there's a little bit of a saga going on between Butler Wade and Rondo we don't want to get into that that no one wants to hear about teammates arguing mm -hmm. but Another thing no one wants to hear about, but of course, you know, we have to recognize it, is the Chicago Bears. Yeah. 2-14, and 14, Matt. You know, something for that you should be happy about, though, that they're going to get the third overall draft pick in the upcoming NFL draft. Yeah, I'm hoping that draft pick will just totally change the outcome of the next season. I hope it will just be 100% better than it was this season because something's got to change. Yeah, in a nutshell, you can say this for about every Bears season, Jay Cutler's injuries, you know, not been healthy. Having mm -hmm. to rely on backups. Alshon Jeffrey did have a four-game suspension for a performance-enhancing drugs, a little bit of a scandal. But you know the Bears. Hopefully, in the future, they'll do good. I'm looking for Deshaun Watson out of Clemson. They should draft a quarterback. Yeah, I mean, we need a new quarterback. You know, Cutler's got to go. He's just not doing anything for this team. He's just getting our money. He's getting Chicago's money. That's all he's been doing, and uh, he's not stepping up to the plate. Yeah, but yeah, Deshaun Watson just won a championship, national championship. Beat. Alabama. Yeah, Alabama. But One of my uh favorite schools. But but that that's been the Chicago Professional Sports update. I'm Casey Vladimir. I'm Ed Angio. And this has been Real Sports. Keep on watching sports.